Okay guys, well we're back out here in the shop. I haven't been out here to do a video in quite a while, but I've been out doing a bunch of machine work and stuff, so been kind of busy getting some things worked out. Uh, one of which was I got so tired of messing with the lock lines for the uh, coolant delivery, I ended up designing and building a coolant ring for my mill, and I've been out here working with it. Uh, kind of a look at it. I got these these nozzles here. There's two different lengths. I got three on one side, three on the opposite side. One on this side, this one in the center here. I've got it dedicated to uh, airline, so it'll have an air blast come out of here and take care of any chips or anything that's down on the like a deep pocket or something. I can just blow those chips right away with with a real quick air blast. And uh, the other three are dedicated for flood coolant to come out of and it's got the the entry in the back it's about as big as I could get in there so I get a maximum flow rate so I've been out tonight messing around with this one part that I'm machining here it's a part for our Sam and myself we designed this belt drive so these are parts that I'm running with this new coolant ring and I've got it set up the thing about these nozzles um, some of them look like they're spraying just on the vise and stuff like that but there's uh, one in the back one on this side and one over here and then there's one here that's a short nozzle and one over here that's a short nozzle so let's see if I can get it so you can see what I'm saying Okay, kind of, kind of blocks out, like this nozzle over here, this nozzle here, and this nozzle on this side are all three pointing at the tool the majority of the time, like pretty much all the time. Uh, these two right out here in the front, this one and this one, I've got set for two different drills. So they, they kind of look like they're spraying out here in the middle of nowhere down here on the vise. But when you got this long tool in here, these three on the back will be spraying all around up here on this drill chuck because the tool is so much further down. And these two here will be spraying on the drill. So it's still getting lubricated. Uh, it worked pretty good just a moment ago, so I ran through the piece and I figured, well, I'll, I'll kind of shoot a video of it here and, and uh, kind of share the coolant ring working. Uh, worked on it a couple of days and got the machine work done on it. And uh, I'll kind of insert some pictures so that you guys can see kind of the process I went through machining it. I didn't film any of it, but I'm going to kind of highlight it here and show it here. And I may end up machining some machining a couple more so we'll see how it all goes I may end up doing a video on machining the parts so we're out here trying to get some of these belt drive parts made and uh, I thought I would just try and film it so that you can kind of see what's going on with the uh, with the coolant ring hopefully I can get a good enough position I don't know what the coolant's going to do to the door it may work all right for the drill at first but I don't know how it's going to work out later on we'll just have to wait and see like I say I ran one just a few moments ago and everything went pretty smooth so hopefully this time things will go along about the same way they did the last time got uh I had to play around with the with the spindle speed over here on my pennant a little bit to get it work out right, but I got to read. 
I got to redo my program for these parts because when I first ran them I was running them on new bearings and now that the bearings are all broke in real good and everything I can roll right on out there now so I had to kind of adjust everything just so so that it it works out you know for the finishes a little better now but here we go we're gonna let her roll this time so see how this goes The good part about the coolant ring is when I change tools, once I get the nozzle set for a particular part and the tools that are involved while I'm machining it, I don't have to mess with anything the rest of the time. I just change tools and I don't ever have to mess with all them lines and all that stuff. So it's working out real well in that aspect. Just got to get used to it. Uh, you know, not really being right on the tool all the time. So, it works pretty good though. So now you can see that was uh, that was a quarter inch bit. Now I got to go to uh, a number nine for the next hole. So basically, all I have to do is I've got it set up where all I have to do is just change out the drill bit. It will be the right length and everything all the offsets work out just right with these with these keyless chucks that bottom out in the bottom of the of the uh, chuck so every time you put it in unless you sharpen the bit it goes right back in the same place every time it's kind of convenient It's a little tough to get uh, coolant in the right place because the next tool is so much different than the first two that you had to kind of find a happy medium. So luckily drilling it doesn't take too terrible much coolant, but you need to get you need to get some in there every now and then, and that hole should fill up pretty good with the coolant as that thing comes back out and it goes back in it should have enough coolant down in there to, to work. It would be different if you were drilling five times the diameter or something and it just kept emptying out the hole so at least pecking like that it kind of helps out. So we got next to this one. This one's quite a bit larger. This time you had to change out the chuck because we go from a quarter inch chuck to a three eight chuck. So your offset changes. Also installed air. So now I can blow everything off pretty good. 
I don't have to brush everything down. I, I got a I got a wash down pump and an airline hooked up, so that makes it a lot nicer as well. Alright, so here we go with this uh, much larger bit now. See we're we've gone from this size down, we were about that long on the chuck. Now we're coming on down here, bits a lot longer as well. See that works a lot better for that bit. It's right on the end of the tool there. But just had to kind of pick a happy medium and kind of work with it best you can. Quite a bit better than the lock lines having to move them every single time. Get this changed out. How a drawbar makes it really nice. And with the coolant ring, I don't have to worry about moving all this stuff around and then put the tool in and then move everything all back around. Of course, now. The lock lines make it a lot easier to get the coolant right at the tool, but you'll see here in just a second that the way I've got all these arranged, while I was running the first piece I kept fine tuning things until I got them where I wanted them. And once I got everything just like I needed it, then now it's just going to be running.
get it back out here so change this tool out. Got to go to a half inch end mill here. This end down here gets a step milled in it. So we'll do an adaptive and then come back and do a, I guess you would call it a, a parallel tool path down across each, across this end here. Kind of clean it up make it look more uniform. <clears throat> Matter of fact, this is this is a piece I did earlier. There's the two pockets. And that's the end that we're getting ready to run now. It's got the kind of a parallel tool path running down each end. Before it's kind of swirly, it goes around and comes back and goes around again, all the way until it gets this whole surface cleared. And then I go back with this finish pass going across it back and forth across the here just to make a more uniform machine pattern kind of clean it up a little bit too it takes off just a small amount of material okay Kind of work on the spindle speed there. Kind of stuck out a little ways on the end there too, so that's probably where a little bit of that chatter came from. But being an adaptive clear, and it's not going to make much difference on the finish. It's going to get milled away anyway. We're starting to lose our path of view here, but. Get a little bit of chatter out of it.
this will be that parallel tool path. Basically, basically just a contour with several passes is what I use. I believe I used a contour. So it'll just go back and forth both ways milling across there. So we got one more uh, tool change. Be a five sixteenths in mill, and uh, what we'll be doing is coming back and putting a counterbore here and here next to this this ledge right here. So it'll be a uh, I believe it's an inch and half, five sixteenths end mill, inch and a half. Oh, I'm sorry, it's an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. 
So. I can't tell you how much better that is. Instead of fighting those lines. Pretty much it's basically this is the most of the machine work on this one set up here and then just go back and open up those two places and machine off the end. Really a simple part of the machine. But uh, as far as the coolant ring goes, it's, it's really nice. So far it's working out real well. I would like to be able to... I would like to be able to, to make one that would work off of the tool table but it's going to be hard to do that and keep it so that you can use a automatic tool changer on it. These nozzles here are going to be kind of close. I'm hoping the short ones will be okay. I don't know about the, the three long ones on the other side. I may have to end up using all short nozzles in, in order to get it to clear ATC coming in from the side. Picked up these nozzles. Uh, I'd looked for them for a little while and I found some that they were they're not the cheapest things in the world to buy, but that's what the short ones look like, and they're angled. So they've got like a little bronze, I call them a ferrule. And then this is pressed and squeezed and locks everything in. And that ball that's on the end of this tube here, it's, it's actually a, a ball with a hole in it, and this tube gets pressed in that ball. And then when all of this goes inside that ferrule and then gets pressed around here, it seals it. And that bronze actually lets this, this nozzle work back and forth smoothly and, and it maintains a seal around it. So it kind of keeps it from leaking.
longer ones. They're basically the same thing except for they're not angled. They're just straight. So they just where this one's got an angled look to it, these just are straight. So that uh there's a little bit of difference there. I didn't know which one would be the best. Can get these the angled ones, you can get them in, I think there are three different lengths here. You can get the long like this one is, and the short like that. I think Amazon has these and these. And uh, they're not cheap. They're like maybe 10 bucks a piece or 10 bucks and some change. So um, they're, they're not cheap, but when they help you out as much as these did, they're well worth the money. Um, but uh, the short nozzles are looking like they're going to be something that you need for a tool changer. But we'll have to wait and see how far along things go and whether or not they'll work. Well, I'm not that far along yet, but. Okay, so everything seems to be getting a good enough amount of coolant. All the finishes look pretty good, so pockets aren't showing a whole lot of signs of recut, so um, it all seems to be in pretty good shape there as far as evacuating the chips go. So with that, I think that's a successful little project there. Alright, so that's the, uh, that's the situation right now. I'll throw some pictures up so that you can see the, the chamber that's inside. Uh, I had it set up, uh, cut kind of an O-ring groove and I was going to kind of put a, like a, make a homemade O-ring and go in there. But right now it's running fine with just no no gasket whatsoever. I, it's just two metal surfaces, machine metal surfaces together, and it seems to be. Seems to be sealing quite well, so I, you know, I may not even worry about a a seal there. And as far as the pressure from the air, this is this is totally separate from the uh, coolant. This is just a a through passage from this side down out this end here, so you don't have to worry about it blowing back into the uh, coolant area or causing it to leak around the top where it's joined together so but anyway that's that's uh that's a look at things and uh if you're wondering what the little balls are here in the back uh i get a lot of comments on them uh if you look down in here you'll see where my drains are you see the ball is in the center there and the chips all the way around it, it keeps all of that from from going down into a chip pan that's underneath of my enclosure. So it's a lot easier to get them out of the enclosure versus having to dig them out of the chip pan. So I might clean the chip pan out maybe once or twice a month. And I may have to clean the uh, enclosure out maybe twice a day or maybe once a day, depending on what I'm machining and how much, you know, it's got to come off of the part. But they help out a lot. They keep a lot of the major uh, the bigger chips from going down and it catches some of the fines but uh, if I've got a filter system that catches the rest of the fines and what little bit that does slip by through the uh, chip pan I got to 
figure out like a little skimmer little filter thing to take care of that but all in all I, I don't have a lot of problems with the chips and the fines and stuff getting in my uh, recirculating in my coolant especially since I put the filter on there it takes all the fines out any that does get in the tank the filter catches it so it's just pure coolant coming out okay guys well uh, I hope you uh, like the coolant ring and enjoyed watching the video of it machining the part there uh, I'll try to get some pictures hopefully I've had some pictures posted all throughout this like I said I didn't get any of the machining of it caught on film but maybe I can machine a couple more or something and uh, maybe I can capture some of that while it's going on so you can see kind of kind of how it works how it kind of goes through it all and everything so alright guys well thanks for watching the video and uh, subscribers welcome uh, click on the like button if you like the video and uh, until next time, you guys take it easy.